I want us all to understand, and I want to preface this teaching with this. All of these teachings that we've been doing about the person of Jesus Christ and the offices that he held, it is important that we understand from Scripture these things so that we can understand that the work that Jesus has done is finished. When Jesus, it, it is so important. When Jesus dies on the cross, his last words are what? It is finished. It is finished. It's done. Done. And how complete it's done, because this is what the devil will do. He'll cut, he, he will allow us to have like this portion of faith. He'll only allow us to go as far as our faith will take us. So mm -hmm. we have to build our, build your faith. Mm -hmm. You have to build it so that when Satan comes and tries to tell you that, you know, you can't be healed because, you know, Jesus did miracles back then and that's not for now. Yeah. I, I was talking to a, a man that wanted to take me to lunch and argue with me a, about how that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for today and I mean, I, I thought that he like needed like pastoral help or something like that. And he just wanted to like argue with me. It made me mad. And he, it was crazy. But no faith to believe that God can still do the same things that he was doing. When Jesus was here, he has not changed. The same miracles that he did, the way that he was walking around, setting people free, it's our mandate mm -hmm. to, to do those things now, and this is why it's important to have a, a thorough understanding of who Jesus was and who he was not. We're gonna talk about that today, uh, who he was not, so that we can understand and beat back every attack of the enemy in your life. Guys, the devil is a dumb dumb, and he'll tell you some stupid stuff, stupid, stupid mm -hmm. stuff. And, and we have to know from scripture and have a thorough understanding in our heart to push him back and go, no, 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 no. It, it, if you're able to, uh, write these scriptures down so that you can know where they're at, where they're found, because I'm telling you, every, every attack of the devil can be pushed back and defeated by understanding who Jesus was mm -hmm. and what he's done. When we Amen. can understand who Jesus was and what he's done, He's pushed back. Yep. All right. So we're going after sinless man. We're going to start in the book of Romans, and we're going to finish in the book of Romans. And I have a feeling I'm going to be preaching by the time we get to the end. Preach it. Of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is just wonderful. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 3 and 4 have so much doctrine jam-packed into these two verses that it is crazy. So read that out of New Living Translation. Read it out of New Living. We're gonna put New Living up there. All right, we got it, go for it, Mom. All right, the law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Mm. That's it right there. That's it. And we're going to break these two scriptures into into four parts that I want us to tackle in. First of all, what the law, what the law could not do. Remember that uh, the law was given to Moses as a, in a temporary covenant, we call it the Mosaic covenant through, or the law of Moses. And we're gonna talk about what the law was powerless to do. We see this, mm -hmm. this phrase continuing through the New Testament, always the, the, what the law was powerless to do, Christ did this. The, the law was powerless to do this, but Christ, because he was this, did that. And that's what we're going to look at. So we're going to, we see what the law could not do. Secondly, why it could not do it. Three, what God has done that the law couldn't do and how he's done it. And then lastly, what God has done by doing this for us. Mm. And 
uh, it, it, when you get the, I know that sounds like a lot of wordplay, but just walk with me through this. The law could not permanently save us. It was only a temporary, it was only a temporary mm -hmm. fix for giving a, a covering for people that lived before Jesus had died and paid the price for their sin. So Moses, Job, mm -hmm. David, these people that God loved, it was, it was a temporary fix so that, so that God could have communion with his people. We see that Moses was a friend of God. David was yeah. known as a man after God's own mm -hmm. heart. He w has always created us so that he could have friendship and communion with us. And his favor could not be released and there could not be communion because there was brokenness in the relationship because of sin. So there had to be a temporary covering. That's why they would have to bring the, the, the lamb. But the lamb could not permanently redeem us because in order to be redeemed, our sinful human nature could not be permanently redeemed unless it was a man coming to redeem us. Mm -hmm. A lamb couldn't do it. The lamb's blood, God would accept it because it was a type of, of the blood of the lamb, which would be Jesus later on, but it was not the permanent fix. So the mm -hmm. law was powerless in that it could not render us clean. Mm -hmm. It had to be a man. It had to be a man. Not only did it have to be a man, it had to be the son of God. And we talked about that already. Mm -hmm. So... The law could not do that, it, and I just explained that the law could not permanently save us and why it couldn't save us. Thirdly, what God has done that the law could not do. I'm gonna read this in the, in the New King James again, if you wanna throw it back up there. For the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God did this by sending his own son in the likeness of mm. sinful flesh. What is yours says? Yours just says a, a, a body like a human body? Like a, yes, body like the bodies we sinners have. Okay, her version says a body like the body that we sinners have. Mm -hmm. Notice that Paul goes intentionally, intentionally says like the body that we have. Mm -hmm. he, did, he could have said giving him a body that we have. It's not the same body, it's a body like in the likeness. Mm -hmm. My version says, uh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. He had to do it in the flesh. There had to be a man. He had to send a man. The man had to be God's son. And he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Verse four, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. This is what God uh, has done that the law couldn't do. When Jesus came, because the law couldn't fulfill it, now we have a man, not only a man, it's a God man, a God's only son, sinless man, comes and fulfills the law that the law might be, be fulfilled in us who don't walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. And that's what God has done for us. He has completely redeemed us from all the curse of the law. This version says, um, and in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. I love that. That's it. He ended it. Ended, ended it. it. All control. Mm. Listen, anything that you're going through, mm. any attack that the enemy's trying to put on your body, yeah. it is over. It has to end because Jesus has already paid it, it is finished. It is finished and Satan's power is broken over, over your life, over your life, mm -hmm. broken. Amen. God has done it. John three sixteen. read John three sixteen. God has done it. It had to be a God man, it had to be his son. It had to be his son. We studied this one the other day that it had to be a God man, but John three sixteen says this. For this is how God loved the world. He gave us, his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. He did it. He sent his only son to us.
This is speaking of the incarnation. When we say the incarnation, we're talking about God coming to earth as a man. And there are other scriptures uh, all throughout the New Testament that, that declare and talk about that, that Jesus came as a man and as God, fully God, mm -hmm. fully man, and was sinless and in, in, in speak of the incarnation, but they're not as specific as Romans mm. chapter uh, eight, verse three and four. And uh, let's look at some of those. John chapter one, verse 14. John one, verse 14. This is a, a great chapter. John makes one of the best, oh man, it's so powerful when he makes the argument that Jesus has come and that he was God in, in a man. Read this. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Awesome. And the word became a man. Uh, the, the, the other word that gets translated that in the King James, the New King James, and I think in the Amplified is the word became flesh. flesh. The word became flesh. But notice here, it doesn't say uh, that it was sinless flesh. It just says flesh. It's not a specific, powerful word, but not mm -hmm. as specific as we see in uh, Romans chapter eight. Galatians 4.4, 4, we see that Jesus is made of a woman. Galatians chapter four, verse four. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. Born of a woman speaks of his humanity, born of a woman, born just like uh, you and I. He came, God came as a uh, man. Philippians 2, 7, made in the likeness of man. Philippians 2, 7. Got you flipping all over the place. Today. That's okay. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. All right. In the likeness of man. Here we again, we see the likeness or in the form of a human, in the form of a human. And uh, the big question that I'm trying to get to right here is what was the nature of Christ? And this is the, 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 the question that I'm gonna answer to you today from scripture, not just giving you my opinion. We're always gonna build a doctrine mm -hmm. and teach this from scripture. Was, was, the, the, was the nature of Christ, was it sinful nature or was it uh, sinless nature? And this is important because uh, there are many people that believe and, and teach that, that Jesus came uh, and he had a sin nature just like you and I. And uh, that's what I'm gonna make a defense of today um, because he did not have a sin nature. He was born, he was born of a woman, but not, but not with sinful nature. He had a body that looked just like mine and yours, but mm -hmm. he was born without a sin nature. Second Timothy 316. We see a, another description here of the incarnation, but still not as uh, specific uh, as our main text in Romans chapter eight. Second Timothy 316. 316. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. All right, do 1 Timothy 3.16. Oh, okay. Well, that was a good scripture. That's a good scripture, talking about the authority of scripture, which is a different subject for a different day, but we're still talking about the sinless nature of Christ. 2 Timothy. For, do 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16. Yeah, 1 okay. Timothy 3.16. Without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in human body. Revealed in a human body. Mm -hmm. In a human body. Great and vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels and announced to the nations. He was believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. That's the whole gospel summed mm, right up in one there. verse right there. God manifested in the flesh. But here we don't have a specific uh, explanation of what kind of flesh was it. Was it sinful flesh or was it, was it 
corrupted or incorrupted? Was it corruptible flesh or incorruptible flesh? And uh, the question that we've got to, that we're going to be looking at here is, uh, when Adam came, he's the first man. Adam comes. What was? Did Adam have a sin nature at the beginning? No. No. He lived in perfection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, there was no sickness. There were no mm-hmm. infirmities. Mm-hmm. There was nothing that he was having to. Uh, he lived in a state of perfection, and he sold us out by being tempted, and gave in to sin. So Jesus, to be redeemed, ha- there had to be another that came as the second Son of God. Mm-hmm. Okay had to come another in the same nature of Adam because you can't undo what Adam did if you came, if you come as a seed of Adam. Mm. That's why. There you go. This is powerful. Mm. Mary was a descendant of Adam and she's going to give birth to a son, but the seed that gets put in her, conceived of the Holy Spirit, we're going to look at this in just a second in Matthew and in Luke, but conceived of the Holy Spirit it couldn't have been. It, it couldn't have been that God puts His essence on the natural son of Joseph and Mary. It could. It would have never worked. It had to be God. It had to be. It had to be in the same form that Adam came. Otherwise, otherwise, it would. It would not have worked. It would not have been able to fulfill the law. It would not have been able to cover us because it had to be a sinless man that came in the likeness of the first man. The first man had to be in the same likeness as, uh, or the second man, Jesus, had to come in the same form as the, the first man, Adam. Adam. Mm-hmm. And, and, and listen, I, I want to make sure that we're clear on this too, because uh, what I'm not saying is that there was divinity in Adam. Adam was a created being. Adam, uh, there was not, uh, God did not conceive his seed, his essence, divine nature into Adam. He created him out of dust and created him here, but with Jesus, he sends God himself and conceives with the woman by the Holy Spirit, and we have God becoming flesh. Adam Adam was a type of a son of God because he was created and not created in corruption. He had, he had, he had perfect nature, but he did not have divine nature, and it's important for us to understand that uh, Adam did not carry the essence and the fullness. We see, I think, in uh, Philippians or Colossians, in, in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That was not the case with Adam. Mm-hmm. That was not the case with Adam. Okay, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Oh, I'm about to have church up in here. <laughs> Hebrews 2. Yeah, verse 14. I like it better when there's people up here with me. <laughs> I can get, a, I feel a little bit looser when there's people up here. Whew, I feel like I have an audience to teach this to. Yes. Getting a revelation of Jesus. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil. Only Woo. by dying. Not only did he have to come as God, he had to come as he had to come as a man. Not only did he have to come as a God man, he had to come and he had to die. Because you can't break death if you don't first die and go through death. My goodness, that's good. That I like that. This is good. But Broke. it doesn't talk about here. This is powerful scripture. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't talk about the essence, the sinlessness that he came in his nature. It's, it speaks of incarnation, but we haven't, we don't see these talking about, they're general statements of the incarnation, but not talking about the sinlessness of him. Hebrews chapter 10, verse five. Read that one for me. A body he has prepared for me. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin sacrifices. Or? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other sin offerings. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written about me in the scriptures. Powerful. Put it up in the New King James, the New Living Translation. 
takes out like this entire section that we are actually trying to talk about. Uh, verse, chapter 10, verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. And then this next statement. But a body you have prepared for me. Does yours say that in the New Living? But a body you have prepared for me. It doesn't. A body you have prepared for me. But a body you have prepared for me. It speaks of the incarnation. That it's God is coming in the flesh. Here was one of the problems in the early church. <clears throat> Here was one of the issues that was going on. There, at, when I say the early church, I'm not talking about like the early church like, you know, 100 years ago. I'm talking about in the time of the apostles. Here was one of the problems that was going down. Uh, there was a group of people that were saying that Jesus had come, but he didn't come. He didn't come in an actual body. It, he just appeared as a man, but he didn't actually have a body. He came in bodily form. This is what they were teaching, uh, that, that he just, it was like a phantom body, that God was still spirit, and that he came here and he appeared to look like one of us, but he wasn't one of us, which would mean then that he did not die. It would mean if, if he came and he didn't have an actual human body, they were saying that, uh, the spirit left, left, and it appeared that Jesus was there and had died, but Jesus was never there to die, which would completely nullify Jesus defeating death. Because like we said earlier, in order to defeat death, he had to die and come through it. Well, he had to be born. He had, yeah, had to be born. So the apostle John obviously heard this. Notice, we, notice John, the beloved, outlives Mm -hmm. outlives the rest of the, the apostles. He's like exiled almost, uh, uh, almost 90 years after Jesus has been born. We see him exiled on the Isle of Patmos, but he's writing back to the churches. And read 1 John. Uh, read 1 John. This, this letter that he wrote was likely only to go back and to blow the ears off of the people to blow these people back that were saying that Jesus didn't have an actual body. And he's, he, he's making the defense like, no, 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 no. He had an actual body. Listen to how he starts off 1 John. Read just the first couple of verses there. 1 John 1. 1 John. Yeah, just, read, just start reading the book of 1 John. I'll tell you when to quit. We proclaim to you the one who exists from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We We've heard him with our own ears. We've heard him speak. And seen him. We've seen him with our eyes. <clears throat> we saw him with our eyes, touched him with our own hands. I touched him with my own hands. In other words, yo people, don't be telling me that he didn't come in a real body because I saw him, I heard him, and I touched him. That's what he's saying. He is the word of life. This one who is life in itself was revealed to us, and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was revealed to us. He was revealed to us, and we touched him. We saw him, we heard him. He's saying he had a body, which is completely, uh, completely ruins, you know, this entire heresy uh, because of this letter that he wrote, which we now have clarity on this. It's almost like that the Lord knew what he was doing, that he needed to make sure that someone that was there was alive to testify that he had a real body and not a phantom body. Look what he says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Can you read those? 1 John 4. 1 John 4, 1 through 3. Bobby Gordon, thanks for watching. Perfect nature, not divine nature. Perfect Georgia nature, Wafer, not divine nature. That's watching good. from Montana. Georgia Wafer, all she the way is. from Montana. She is. Dear friends, do not believe anyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God, for there are many false prophets in this world. This is how we know if we have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. Boom. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has a spirit of Antichrist. Mic drop moment. Which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. John ended the argument right there. He did. 
He said, look, if anybody else is telling you anything else about the essence and the, and the presence of Jesus in bodily form, if they're telling you that he didn't come in a real body, then they have an anti-Christ right. spirit. And he said, and they're, and they're false prophets and false teachers. He ended this argument. So we know from the Gospel of mm -hmm. John, mm -hmm. uh, there was a real body. It was not phantom body. So don't be deceived by that. Jesus actually came. He was real. You could... He was a real person, a real human born of a woman. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. And this is what's important. We can't. We can't be redeemed just like the lamb. The, the lamb in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. actual lamb, I'm not speaking figuratively as lamb of God. I'm saying the, the lamb could not redeem completely and effectively all of the people. It was a temporary accepted sacrifice, but it could not redeem them because the lamb does not have a human nature. To, be, to have my human nature redeemed, I had had to be a real human body that came and died to be the permanent propitiation is the theological word, I guess. Uh, with the exchange, my identity gets placed on Christ. Read this scripture again, 1 Timothy 2.14. He takes it upon himself. It's a propitiation. It's an exchange of identity. He takes on, he took my sin and there's an exchange. He takes my sin and I take his purity. That's salvation. This is good. Well, and you understand too, that's why when they were temporarily covered by the blood of a lamb, that they had to go to paradise. Yeah. So what did Jesus do when he was in the, in the grave? He went to paradise and he redeemed them. He did. Goes down and preaches the gospel yep. to them. I am the lamb who yep. has taken. He, he went to them and read to them 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 14, which had not even been written yet. Or 224, read that to us again. What? The, the same scripture, 1 Peter 224. Oh, okay. I'm just having you read it again. Okay, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. That's it. The, wow. lamb, the lamb couldn't carry my sin. Mm -hmm. The lamb couldn't carry my, my sin. The, the uh, sacrifice of lambs and goats is not what he wanted. Mm -mm. It had to be a human nature, and it had to be sinless. One of the confusing things that uh, gives, gives people that... Uh, that professed that Jesus did not have a sinless nature is that he declared himself, he referred to him often as uh, the son of man. Jesus called himself the son of man. It, he said that to let them know that he was human just like they were. Yeah. He had a human body. He mm -hmm. was a son of man just like he was born of a woman. It was important that he be born yes. of a woman just like everybody else. He had an actual baby body that grew up. Let's look at this. Was his body sinful? Let's answer that question. Was his body sinful? Did he have a sinful nature? You and I, when we're born, we have a sin nature. We are descendants of Adam and we have a sin nature. Yes. We have a sinful nature. You don't have to teach your kid to lie, cheat, and they're still, they have a sinful nature. The sin nature is passed down through the blood. The blood is passed down from the father, but Jesus did not have an earthly Adamic father, meaning he is not a descendant of, of Adam, Adam by blood, but his body is a descendant of Adam by Mary, but mm -hmm. he does not take on a sinful nature, which would have been passed down through his blood. The thing that's wonderful too is that science comes through and proves this, that the blood is transferred from the father. Now, now we realize this. They didn't real, realize that then, but God knew it from the beginning. Likeness, uh, the answer to the question was Jesus's body sinful. Did it have a sinful nature? Is no. He was free from sin. He came in the likeness. Let's go back to uh, Romans chapter eight. 
Roman, this is our main text for this teaching, Romans chapter 8. We're not going to build an entire doctrine on one scripture. We're always going to let the totality of scripture give us our doctrine, but this is the, the main one that we're building off of because it's the most thorough, and then we use all of the other ones to, to um, in unity, support that. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. Read that again. I want you to focus in on the part where it says, like a man. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners had. Like the bodies. Like not, the bodies. And notice, Paul could have said, if he, would, if he was wanting to say that he had a sinful nature, he would have said, he gave us a body that we sinners have. But he said he gives us a body like the one that we have. Mm -hmm. Which he, why did he do that? Because he's specifically telling us here, he didn't have a sinful nature. He had a body in the likeness of mm -hmm. sinful man. But he did not have sin. That's point number one. We're going to do nine things really quick. Gabriel in Luke chapter one, verse 34, 35, declares Jesus as a baby to be the holy one, that holy thing within your belly, Mary. Read this, Luke chapter one, verse 34 and 35. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. It, it couldn't have had a sinful, mm -mm. the baby could not, have been a sinful nature and still be called holy. It was Gabriel refers to the child as holy, holy. because mm -hmm. the child was holy. There's not much room for misinterpreting this. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Matthew chapter 1, 18 through 20. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's one time, through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's once, keep going. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quickly. He's already told, the, he's already declared conceived by the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit one time. Now the angel is about to tell Joseph again. And so he cons considered this, and as he considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David. The angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for this child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. That's the second time, conceived by mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost not given a sinful nature. Reason number four, 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Paul declares to the church at Corinth that he who knew no sin, he never knew sin because it was not part of his nature. Read this for us. <clears throat> for God made Christ who never sinned to be an offering for our sins so that we could be made right through God, through Christ, with God, through Christ. Put the New, the new King James Version up there. 2 Corinthians 5.21. I'll have to flip there because I can't see it yet and we're on a little bit of a delay. There it is. For God made Christ who never sinned Put it in the New King James, please. This is the New Living. Oh, behind us. <laughs> for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. He knew no sin because it was not part of his nature. To yeah. be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. <clears throat> this is a new Bible and the pages are stuck together. Oh, we're breaking it in today. Breaking yo. in a new Bible. Hebrews 4. Verse 15. 15. The high priest of ours understands our weaknesses.
for he faced all of the same testings that we do, yet he did not sin. Went through everything that we yeah. had. He was a real man, just mm -hmm. like you and I, and he, never he passed the test, never wow. sinned. Uh, Hebrews 7, 26, just flip over a couple of pages, talks about a perfect man, Hebrews 7, 26. He is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. Holy, harmless, mm -hmm. undefiled, separate from sinners. When they would bring the lamb in the Old Testament, this is so good. When they would bring the lamb in the Old Testament, what kind of lamb did they have to bring? A spotless lamb. Spotless, without mm -hmm. blemish. Mm -hmm. Spotless without blemish. Mm -hmm. That means that when the lamb was born, it couldn't be running around and, you know, trip over another lamb and, mm -hmm. you know, Get cut itself leg. open and have a big, yeah. you know, cut on its neck. It had mm -hmm. to be, it had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It had to be perfect. If Jesus had not had a sinless nature, he would not have been able to be called holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, separate from us. Mm -hmm. Why was he separate? Because he didn't have a sin nature, because he was holy, just like God is holy and he's become higher than the heavens. Uh, Hebrews chapter nine, verse 14. This is gonna again say that he's without spot. Verse nine, chapter nine, verse 14. Just think about how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciousness from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. And my version says spotless, mm -hmm. completely spotless, which speaks of spotless lamb without blemish. Good stuff, good stuff. Hey, Aunt Becky, thanks for tuning in. And Shirley, thank you, Shirley, for jumping in and watching from North Dakota for, for the, the first, first time. time. Thank you. I'll tell you again, everybody that's willing, please share this broadcast. This. Today, today's teaching is gonna break somebody free. Mm -hmm. When we get to the end and talk about like what this did and why it was important, I, you just, good thing you're not wearing socks today because we- Blow my socks We'd off. be knocking your socks off. I'm ready. Because the reason why, it, I'm, when we get to that part, it's gonna be, oh, we're gonna have church. We need an organ player today. <laughs> A Leslie organ. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, 1 Peter 1, 19, no blemish. Remember that the, that the lamb in the Old Testament had to be spotless and blameless. And, if, and that was a type of the permanent sacrifice that mm. was, was to come. And if the type had to be blameless, then the antitype, which would be Jesus, also has to be holy and blameless. I love this. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. No room for argument there. First John chapter three, verse five. It's a good thing I know the books of the Bible and where they're at. Yeah. First John yeah. three, five? Yeah, verse five. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins and there is no sin in him. There is no sin in him. First Peter, no, First uh, John three, five. There is no sin in him. Uh, you know, the Catholic Church, they, they teach this violently, that Jesus was sinless and spotless. They take it so seriously that he had to be sinless and without sin and holy and blameless and without spot, that they take it too far and go into the, immac teach the immaculate mm -hmm. conception mm -hmm. that he, that Mary was also holy and blameless. Right. And then we see, they even bleed into the worship of Mary, which there's not any scripture at all that tells us mm -hmm. that Mary was blameless or, or holy. We see that the Lord was pleased with her, with her conduct mm -hmm. growing up, but she was, she was a descendant of Adam and, and had a sin nature. Right. But Jesus did not, mm -hmm. and uh, they take that, they take that too far, saying that she was without sin. Uh, she was from Adam and therefore sinful, and not one scripture. I want to be clear on this. There's not one scripture that can be named that declares Mary to be holy, blameless, without mm -hmm. sin, and it's the scripture that's our our 
authority for faith and conduct. How then could Jesus, and this is one of the questions that people get into, is if Jesus did not have a sin nature, then how could he then be tempted? And this is an easy, an easy question. Uh, it's to, a good question. It's a good question, but it, it has a very simple answer. Uh, we talked about Adam earlier, mm -hmm. and Adam came as a sinless man. He, he lived in perfection. He was not susceptible to sickness or infirmity. All of the curses of the law came upon, came upon him uh, because of his, his sin, but he was sinful yet still tempted. I mean, he was sin, sinless when he first came into the world, but then was still tempted by Satan and, and gave in to uh, temptation. Hebrews, read 4.15 again. Hebrews chapter 4.15. Adam had no sin nature in the beginning, but he still was tempted and fell. The high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Tested just like us, tempted just like us, but without sin. That's a, that was Hebrews 4.15. <clears throat> uh, Jesus not only, this is what we need to understand from this. I mean, that whole that whole uh, idea is debunked there in the understanding of Adam and Adam's nature of perfection and then still giving in to sin. In the same way that Adam could have been tempted, Jesus could have been tempted. And we see in Hebrews 4.15, he was tempted in every way, but yet mm -hmm. did, not, did not sin. And here's why this is important. Jesus came, and I want you to stick with us. Please don't be a quitter uh, today. Stick with us because we're teaching <clears throat> this doctrine <coughs> We're teaching all about it right now, but we're, I'm telling you, when we get to the end part and help you understand why and what it did because he was sin, sinless, it's gonna rock your world because if you can get this in your spirit, mm -hmm. nothing can touch you. Well, you but just you said that though. Us. You just said that Adam was born without sin in a, in a perfect world and you said that it exempt him from sickness. Yeah, the sickness couldn't touch him. Okay, then Jesus came and provided healing so we are exempt from yeah. sickness. Woo, hallelujah. Oh yeah, we're gonna, well, we're, That's getting, revelation. we're getting there. But first, That's good. we uh, wanna thank our sponsors, Whataburger, for fast, <laughs> effective relief. <laughs> I have a Whataburger, but it's in my office. Surely, thank you for watching. We're glad that we're knocking your socks off. Praise God. Learning mm -hmm. so much from this as I am just starting to read my Bible. Awesome. awesome. Hey, stick with us. We do this yeah. every day at 10 as long as the shuttle's worth is off the air. Gosh, that guy. But, uh, okay, let's keep this going because mm -hmm. I don't want to go. go too long. Um, but this is good stuff. Jesus came as a sinless man not only to cleanse humanity but to start to reset to redeem us as and cleanse us and to start a sin-free humanity. Mm. He came <laughs> to redeem us, not just to, cl to cleanse us from sin, but to, to return us to perfection and to return us and to start a new humanity rendered completely free from all the curse of the law, from all the curse of sin. Galatians chapter Three verses 13, for Christ has redeemed us. He has redeemed us and it, it, he starts in us. We are the firstborn. He is the firstborn of all of the, the sinless humanity. And then we that are in him, we, he calls us his brothers. We're gonna see that in just a minute. Jesus is the second man. Adam is the first man. We've already talked about that. Uh, what, here's the question. Was Jesus, when he came, less holy than Adam? Was Wait. he less holy no. than Adam? Mm -hmm. Certainly no. not, because no. he had the divine nature yes. of God, sinless nature. To say that Jesus had an earthly sinful nature would to say that he came and that Adam would have been more qualified than he to, he had to come, he had to come in the same perfect, state of perfection as mm -hmm. Adam did in order to, to in order to qualify to redeem us, he had to come in the same state that Adam mm. came in. That's good. How then was he like us? He was not sinful, but Adam, uh, Adam was subjected uh, 
this is what we were talking about in the state of perfection mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. adam came he was not sub subjected to the things that were subjected to fatigue mm -hmm. sorrow disappointment he lived in a state of complete perfection complete perfection but adam had didn't have to deal with uh with fatigue sickness infirmities and when Jesus came, because he's born of a woman, he doesn't have a sin nature, but he does still have a human nature under the curse of the law. Meaning that he, which why, is why we see in Isaiah 53, a man of sorrows. Mm -hmm. He felt, he felt sorrow. He understood the disappointment of being betrayed by a close friend. Yep. He understood what it meant to weep for the loss of his mm -hmm. friend Lazarus. Mm -hmm. He understood every, all of the emotions that we understand as human, he took on that nature. Not a sin nature, but a human nature to understand our sorrows. He understood fatigue. We see in John chapter 4, he shows up at the woman at the, at the well, and he sits down by the mm -hmm. well, and he's fatigued. He's tired from a long journey. Mm -hmm. Not a sin nature, but it's a human nature under the curse of the law. This is good. Good stuff. He understood disappointment, sorrow. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. We see Jesus as a, as a child, and he, we see him growing. He's able to grow in stature with God and with man. We've seen him growing up, so we see humanness on him here. Read that for us. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. In verse 52. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. That's good. Now, in James, we see that God, when people are tempted, James instructs us, don't say that God is tempting mm -hmm. you because God does not tempt others, nor can he be tempted. God in his divine nature could not be tempted, but Jesus taking on a human nature understands us in our weakness because he is our great high priest who understands us. This is all in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter five, verse two, read that for us. And I'm not gonna make us read 415 again that talks about that, uh, that he understands us in our weakness. Hebrews 5, 2. But Jesus was now subject to temptation as a man. And if not, if he wasn't fully man, then he could not be tempted. James chapter 5, verse 2. Oh, James 5. No, two. I mean Hebrews. I'm Hebrews sorry. 5, 2. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. And he is able to deal gently with ignorant and wayward people because he himself is subject to the same weaknesses. He's subject to our weakness. He took on a human nature, yet without sin. All right, are you all ready? We're gonna, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you seven reasons why this is essential. And this is the end, and we'll let you get out of here. Why is this essential? First of all, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Turn over there. In order to save man, he had to become a man. He could not save us unless he was one of us. He had to be one of us to save us. What we do see Jesus for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with the glory and honor. But only because he suffered death for us is right. he now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. He, ta he did it for us all. He died so that we wouldn't have to. He died to sin and took it upon us so we wouldn't have to. In order to save us, he had to become a man. Read verse 11. Did you already read 11? So now Jesus and the ones who makes us holy have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. He becomes one of us, dies as a man so that he can call us his brothers. Yes. He can save us because he calls us his brother. Because he's one of us. He saves yeah. us. That's, that's what qualified him to be, to be the sacrifice. Verse 14. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. 
Whoa. That might I'm be my you, new favorite scripture. This is getting good right here. 16 and 17. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. He did it for you. Yeah. He became like you. Wow. So he could do it for you. Wow. Number two, he had, he had to keep and fulfill the law. Christ, remember, he's, he's speaking to the Pharisees. He says, don't think that I came to abolish it. I came to fulfill it. He had to fulfill the law. There had to be a man. Mm -hmm. If he's going to abolish the law for us and make it where we don't have to keep going by the, the blood of lambs and goats, he had to come and fulfill it. There had to be a man that came with sin nature that came and undid everything that Adam did in in order to defeat sin, he has to come as a man and live sinless the entire time and then die as a sinless man and take it for us. In order to, he had to fulfill the law. And otherwise we'd be under the other covenant. Yeah. He had to come and, and fulfill the law. There had to be somebody that could come and walk the road that we walk, walk where we walk, go mm -hmm. through what we go through and yet do it sinless and then die blameless so that he could undo and and break us out of that old covenant so that the Holy Spirit could be released out upon us so that we can walk with God completely and put on his righteousness. When Ephesians chapter one talks about that he is seated with him in, in heavenly places mm -hmm. and then now that we can go and be seated with him, if he hadn't come and broken the law, we could have never done that. Oh. I can sit with him because he broke Ooh. the law. Number three. In order Jesus. to take my guilt, he had to take my nature. He must be a man to represent man. Mm -hmm. In order to take my guilt, he had to come as a man. We've already covered this one, but it had to be, it, he had to be man to represent man. He can't come, uh, if it could have been done with a lamb, there would have been no need for Jesus. But a man, he had to come as a man, a sinless man to represent me. Number four, before he can save us, he has to be able to give us a new nature. Mm. Before he can save us, he has to be able to redeem us and give us a new nature. Before we can go to heaven and be with God, before we can be re reunited with God, we have to be given a new nature. That's why he says, that it, Paul says, and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus. Put on his nature. We have to repent of our sin and put on his nature sinless nature we put on his righteousness so that we can go with him to god wow. hebrews chapter 4 verse 5 read this hebrews 4 5 but in the other passage passage, passage, passage. god said they will never enter into my rest that was hebrews 4 5 4 5 I've got, the, I've got the wrong scripture listed right there, but he is our mediator. Well, go on and read let's six read and five, seven. So let's read five. You'll one. see we can this enter is, into rest. Put Hebrews 5, chapter 1. Jesus as our, as our high priest. I'm in the New King James on this one. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men and things pertaining to God that he may offer to God gifts and sacrifice. He is our high priest. We've, we've seen this all through Hebrews chapter five, that we have a great high priest who can sympathize with us. In, in, in another verse, I think in seven, it refers to him as our mediator. He's our mediator. Yes. He's our mediator. If Jesus had not come as a sinless man, I could not pray. Yeah. I could not pray. Wow. That's why we have to pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. I have to pray in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I, I have to put on his... His righteousness, otherwise I cannot approach God. Mm -hmm. He is our mediator. I can, you can't come boldly to the throne of grace 
without receiving mercy through Christ first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're still back in the old covenant and begging God for mercy uh, uh, for a temporary fix to be able to pray. But he is our mediator so that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Him in us and we in him so that we can pray. You, you, you have no right to pray without Jesus as a sinless man. Number six, he could not conquer death without dying. Right. He can't, you can't, you have to go through it. You have mm-hmm. to die. Mm-hmm. This is why it doesn't work if Jesus came as a phantom body. He had an actual body that died on the cross and was raised back to life. And because of the mm-hmm. resurrection, we all can be resurrected in a newness of him. It's why we get baptized. The command is to get baptized because we're baptized into his death and resurrected with him when we come out mm-hmm. of the water. Mm-hmm. You can't conquer death without dying. Romans chapter six, verse 10, read this one. He should be the first to rise again. This is good. Verse 10. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. Now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. Died died for us. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. Fifteen twenty one says, so you see, just as death came into the world through a man. Adam, we're talking about Adam here. Death came into the world through Adam who messed it up and sold us out mm-hmm. to Satan. Death came in by one man. Keep going. Now the resurrection from death has begun through another man. The second man came and undid yes. it and redeemed us. He conquered death by his dying. And number seven, this is the best one ever. The reason he had to come as a sinless man is to silence Satan forever. Hallelujah. To silence him forever. Otherwise, Satan has been taunting God Mm -hmm. ever since Adam sinned. He's been taunting Mm -hmm. God ever since. And and there's nothing that, nothing could have ever been done for us if it, if, if it had not been a sinless man, Satan would say, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the, the, the perfect work is not finished yet because it wasn't a sinless man. But Jesus came, took on a, a, a full human body, lived it without sin, and took on our, our human body and defeated it to silence Satan forever in your life. I'm telling you, he has to, he has, the devil has to shut up mm-hmm. in everything that he's telling you because you can take the identity of Christ by faith. Read Hebrews 2, 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, and then we're going to finish with Romans 8. And when you understand this, my goodness. Hebrews 2, 14. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Break the power of the devil by dying as a sinless man. This is it. This Hebrews 2.14 sums it all up. I'm going to read it again in the New King James because it uses a more powerful word more powerful word than break i like my this word here better hebrews 2:14 inasmuch then as the children have partaken of the flesh and blood he himself jesus likewise shared in the same that through his death he might destroy <laughs> him who had the power of death that is the devil Every work of Satan against your life yes. is destroyed. And this is what, why you, you hear us preaching this boldly, mm-hmm. that sickness can't stay. It's destroyed. The work, the work of sin is destroyed yes. by the work of Jesus on the cross. I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish off and I'm going to read Romans 8. And understanding this, 
you understand why Paul gets to the end of Romans chapter eight and starts declaring this. I wish I could have been there with him when he was like writing this down. Paul usually had somebody writing for him, but can you imagine him dictating this and preaching it? <laughs> because he's like walking people through it. Like write this to the church at Rome. Mm -hmm. Tell them and help them to understand that Jesus came as a sinless man and took on our nature and he gets all the way through and he gets to the end of, he gets to the end In verse 31, and I'm gonna read for a while, so get ready. So this is understanding that, that sin is broken by the sinless man, Jesus. Paul begins to declare, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In other words, if Jesus is gonna give up his only son, to die for you, why in the world wouldn't mm -hmm. he pay the price for your sickness? If Come you on. just need a simple healing, mm -hmm. he gave his only begotten son for you. He'll give you all things. Mm -hmm. Verse 33, who then? This is it. Coming off of Hebrews 2.14, that Jesus has paid it all to destroy the work of the devil yes. in our life. Who then yeah. will bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it that condemns? Who's, it, who's left to condemn you because the, the work of Satan is destroyed? Is it Christ who died and furthermore is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession because he's the only one left that could have the right to condemn us because he's the only one righteous and he's saying no. It's not him. He's not doing it. He died for you. Who's going to separate you? Is it Christ who died, furthermore risen, who's at the right hand of God, who's now making intercession for you? Who shall separate you from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Are you, you're, you're relieved from all of those things. As it is written, for your sake, we're killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we're more than conquerors. Mm. Through him who loved us. And this is where Paul makes the declaration. I'm, I'm persuaded that death, life, angels, principalities, powers, nor things present, not anything coming down the pipe in your future, not height, depth, nothing. No created thing shall ever separate you from the love of God. And if he loves you, if he loves you, he will surely give unto you all things. Then all why things. do we let Satan condemn us? It all has to be broken over your life. Wow. By faith, if you'll receive and understand yeah. this, you can't stay sick. Mm -hmm. You can't stay sick. You, it, if you're depressed, you can't stay depressed. Can't stay depressed. De depression is of the devil. Yes. There, it's fears of the devil. Yes. And it's broken. Mm hmm his sinless nature came, he came, because he was sinless in nature, he came and defeated it, it's mm -hmm. broken and dead. My goodness, I don't know about you, but I've had some church. Woo! I've had some church, that's a, that's a great revelation. You need to share this with your friends because mm -hmm. people that understand this, they think that they have the faith that Jesus will come and forgive them of their sins and they can go to heaven, but they don't understand that his work came in defeated and destroyed the entire work of Satan over our lives. Yes. And if you will walk in him, it, how do you do that? How do you do that? The only way to walk in him mm -hmm. is to walk blamelessly. Close the door on sin. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you're walking in sin, it opens a door for the devil to come back in. Mm -hmm. But as long as you will submit your flesh to the Lord, mm -hmm and walk sinless and blameless. You are in him, he is in you, and you are untouchable. Well, we can do it. I mean, some people say, oh, it's just, oh, it's just so hard. No, he said, be holy as I am yeah. holy. So it, he it, was saying, it's possible for us to live that way. But you can't do it by yourself. No, you have you to do have it in the, the power Spirit. of the Holy Spirit. Yep. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to be able to, to walk in this. Man, it's good. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, we got one more. Tomorrow we still got to do 
uh, we've still got to talk about that he is our eternal king. Friday. Friday. Friday at 10. Tomorrow night is Amy and Noemi yeah. at 8 p.m. But why not Tune go ahead in. and go tomorrow at 10? Well, well, we could do it twice. Let's do it. Tomorrow at 10. Let's do it. Yeah, and then Amy and Noemi will still be on tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, don't miss that. That's going to be great. They're always fun to watch. They're and talking about joy. Are you still talking about joy? Mm -hmm. All right, the joy of the Lord. Yeah. It's going to be great. Listen, if this is blessing you, we're mm -hmm. praying that the Lord is going to continue to open up new avenues for us to be able to yes. get his message out and to preach this and to break people into a place of faith and to build their spirit strong. And you can, uh, you're not giving to us. We're not enriching ourselves mm -hmm. uh, off of this, but you can uh, give by typing hashtag donate in the comments mm -hmm. and, uh, and support worldwide impact. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we've got the opportunity to go and to preach these messages yes. to, uh, to people in Zambia yes. and in India. And we're praying the Lord's just going to keep opening up new yeah. doors and avenues, um, praying that the Lord would help us to be able to find, uh, I mean, we basically, in building this studio, accidentally learned how to produce a live TV show. And uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be broadcast. People need to hear this. Yes. People need to hear this. And uh, the, not that they need to hear me or they need to hear you, but they need to, to hear, hear this word. They need to hear God's word mm -hmm. preached boldly mm -hmm. and, and to, be, to be set free. So help us by doing that. You can uh, give at springfirst.org um, or you can type hashtag donate in the comments and then follow the link that pops up at the end of the broadcast. And then we're, uh, what that you saw at the beginning of the uh, program, the video of Light the Night, our plans are to do another one um, in the early summer. So... That takes finances. That takes oh, yeah. money. Uh, the last one cost us about $50,000. And uh, so we need help in um, taking the gospel to the people of Houston, letting them know that Jesus loves them. And the only way we can do it, he said, go out into the hedges and highways, compel them to come in. So we go into the neighborhood, we compel them to come, and then we have a big outreach. And you saw that at the beginning of the program. And we're wanting to do that time and time and time again throughout Houston and win our city for Jesus. Yeah. It's what he said to do. Amen. And it's fun preaching to people. Yeah. When people say, oh, you can't go do those. That's like a thing of the past. Let me tell you. We did it. We didn't know what mm. in the world we were doing. And we set up a sound system yeah. and a stage and began to preach and bless the people. We did what Jesus did. He went about doing good. Mark chapter 10 or Acts chapter 10, went about doing good. Mm -hmm. Doing good to the people, yeah. giving them, blessing the people, and touching them. We were laying hands on them. Yes. We saw people get healed on the field, and it's just Help awesome. us take the gospel. So, uh, uh, if you're, hashtag donate. If you're in a place of uh, financial uh, struggle, mm -hmm. uh, you can pray, 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 pray. You can pray, but the only way to unlock the blessings of the Lord in the area of material wealth mm -hmm. is to give, yep. is to give, so, to sow a seed. You, you can only be blessed by, financially mm -hmm. by the measure that you're giving out. Yeah. And uh, that's a, we'll, we'll teach on that sometime yeah. too. People think that's like a, a money grab for ministries and it's not. The, you're not giving to a ministry. Uh, the Bible teaches this, that when you give an offering, that is, you're giving it unto the, the Lord who receives it in heaven. Um, the ministry here is just mm -hmm. an altar that you're laying it, laying it on, and uh, we'll advance the gospel. So. Yes. Shirley, thank you for watching. We're all, we're we're blessed that you're blessed, and uh, and Kent, we agree. Kent helped us build this set, and uh, we agree that it is the best Facebook live stage in all the land. So thank you for your help. Georgia Kent. said this is better than cleaning house. Good. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, every day at 10, we'll give you a reason yeah. to not, not clean, clean your house. house. All right, Mom, pray for the people that this would get deep yes. in their spirit and that people would be set free today of any attack of the mm -hmm. devil because it has been utterly destroyed by the work of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are the one that reveals Jesus. So I pray that today, as the people have heard the word of God, they will realize 
that they no longer have to put up with sickness and poverty and depression, that Jesus came to deliver us and to break the power of Satan over our lives. So we say today in the name of Jesus, receive this word and begin to live in abundance. Jesus came so that we could have life and have life in abundance. That is redeemed from the curse of the law. So Father, today we pray that every person that hears this on the live broadcast or repeat, Father, that this revelation of this word will get deep into their hearts and they will change the way they live and they will hold on to the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal this word to them that they can live a new life of joy and peace and living above all the attempts of the enemy to destroy them. We bless you and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do with these words today in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Woo. Amen. Been fun. All right. Sister Melody, thank you for joining us. Bobby Gordon, thank you for being a, a trooper and sticking with us all the way through the end. Melody Chama. Share the broadcast. Help us get the, the word out that people yes. can live free in Jesus' name. All right. Every day, 10 o'clock, join us. We'll see you tomorrow. Amen. If you're close, get here to church tonight. It's going to yes. be good. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.